Eric, as mentioned, you are running the uh, Xfinity Series race this weekend. How much of a um, benefit is that to you to get that extra track time at Sonoma? I don't know that it's super beneficial, to be honest. Uh, I just love that road course. Um, of all the road courses that we run, it's my favorite. I run the best there. And so um, having the opportunity to run an Xfinity car there, um, something that, you know, is new uh, for that series. I just thought that it would be a great opportunity and and something uh, for me to go and do. And and I think it is slightly helpful just to get some more reps um, at the road courses, because with only 20 minutes of practice, you don't get a lot of laps in the cup car. Um, so just being able to pick up, you know, little things here and there on the racetrack, um, maybe helps a little bit, but the cars are so different nowadays. Um, you know, with the, the brakes, the way the cars drive, uh, the transmission, all those things that a lot, a lot of it doesn't really correlate at all. Yeah. Eric, how do you feel like you guys are doing as far as, you know, everybody appears the Fords have, we're a little bit off on downforce on the intermediates. Where do you feel like you are? And did Blaney's win at Charlotte, give you guys any maybe extra either hope or direction? Um, I, I think that we have potential in our cars, right? Um, Blaney at Charlotte showed that. Uh, I still think that our cars um, are really aero sensitive in traffic compared to the other manufacturers. Um, you know, Bl Blaney did a great job of executing for all 600 miles and, uh, never really lost his track position. So when you when you look at that, um, you know, I, I think that's that's a key component of it. I feel like our cars have the capability and the potential to go fast. But one of the things we're continuing to work on is is just making our cars raceable. Um, it seems like uh, we we don't quite have that figured out as as well as the the other manufacturers as far as being able to to race in traffic. I know that all the cars are are bad in traffic, um, but it seems like we tend to be a little bit worse in traffic uh, than our competition. So that that's one of the things that we're continuing to to strive to get better at um, is is making our cars better uh, in dirty air. Um, but we certainly know that we have potential um, to make our race cars go fast. Um, you know, we just we got to execute. And I feel like one last thing to add to that is I, as I feel like um, as a manufacturer, if you talk to all the Ford drivers, I feel like our, our window is pretty small. Um, if we hit it, we hit it. And if you're slightly off, you're really off where it does seem like um, the competition has a little bit bigger of a window um, to, to, to be closer to hitting the setup. And uh, is there anything that you noticed from Coda with a road course race without uh, cautions at the stage breaks and how you think it'll be different at Sonoma this time? I think at Coda, it, you know, made the strategy a little bit more straightforward. Um, and, and now I think it's going to be the same at Sonoma. When you look at the race and the, the strategy play for Sonoma, it makes the race relatively straightforward um, with where you're going to pit. Um, there, there's a, you know, couple lap window here or there on, on what you're going to do for strategy. So it, it, it really takes away, um, in my opinion, from the, the strategy aspect of it. Uh, you know, la last year at Sonoma was a perfect example. Uh, we went there and, and we had a really good car, but we chose to score as many stage points as we could, uh, with this position that we were in, in points going to Sonoma. And so we finished fifth in stage one, we finished second in stage two uh, because we elected to stay out on the racetrack and score stage points. And then, you know, after the stage breaks, we had to come back through the field on, on newer tires compared to the other guys that pitted a couple laps before the end of the stage. And so we, we, we constantly battled uh, from poor track position, driving through the field, and then staying out at the stages to score points where now there's not that opportunity. Um, so it doesn't really jumble up or mix the field up as much. It's, it's more about qualifying well, and then just making sure that you pit when you're supposed to pit. And um, just uh, 
do you have any sort of timetable like where you feel like you have to make a decision for next year or is it pretty much just kind of flow and fluid i think it's still very fluid uh, i don't I don't have any timetable by this time last year, um, the, what I thought was going to happen ended up not, not happening. Um, so yeah, I think for me, it's still, um, just get up every morning and, and continue to work hard at being the best race car driver I can be. And, um, we'll see where things shake out. Thank you. We'll go to Trey Downey next. Hey, Eric, after the off week, we head to Nashville. The first year there, you sat on the pole, ran in the top five all day. Last year, it's kind of a middle-of-the-pack run. Um, just how different is that track in the next-gen car, and do you think you learned anything last year that can, you know, maybe get you to have a similar performance to what you had in 21? Uh, I do think we learned some things last year at Nashville. Um where we missed the setup and, and where we felt like we were off. So I, I do look forward to going back there. Um, I, I really enjoy that racetrack. It's a track that I, I liked a lot when I ran trucks and uh, Xfinity races there. And then first time there in a cup car, uh, qualified on the pole, ran top five. So it's a place that I really enjoy um, running at. And I hope that, uh, you know, we learn from some of the things we felt like we did wrong uh, last year with this new car that, um, will make us better. And then this weekend at Sonoma, we've, after that, we've still got three more road course races before the playoffs, Chicago, Indy, and Watkins Glen. Um, just where do you think your overall road course package is as a team right now? And where do you think you are as a, as a road racer? Um, well, I'll, I can grade myself first and say that I am, a uh, uh, average, um, at best road racer at most road courses. Um, and, and at Sonoma, I'm a B plus, um, I would say Sonoma is hands down my best road course. And I feel like that's because it's not really one of those racetracks that you can attack because the surface and the way the tires wear out, um, you know, it's, it's more of a rhythm racetrack and a, it's kind of flowy and, you can't really attack the racetrack or you'll abuse your tires and, and really pay a, a huge penalty um, after five, six laps on tires. And, and, and I do better at that. Um, you know, even short track race in Richmond, Loudoun, um, you know, those places like, like that, that you have to take care of your stuff. I tend to do much better at and the places that you have to, you know, be overly aggressive and really attack the racetrack and attack the braking zones um, are not my best places. And so road course racing, um, you know, those, those racetracks that you have to really attack the braking zones and do all those things, um, I tend to not be as good at. And, and I feel like as an organization, um, we have a lot of room for improvement uh, to make our road course stuff better. Um, you know, I, I think that we have been average at best as an organization with this next gen car um, at most road courses, not all of them, uh, but at most of them, we have struggled to make our car, um, you know, get in the braking zones as hard as um, the competition. We've struggled to get the Ford drive off of the corners um, to, to, to compete. So I, I think there's a lot of things um that we can do better for sure do you have any idea where chicago will fall in that in terms of like is that going to be one where you're going to have to be super aggressive i imagine so with probably the lack of passing opportunities there yeah i think chicago is certainly going to be a racetrack that you're going to have to be very aggressive um you, you know the the surface is going to be very interesting uh where they've repaved or where they've not repaved uh, what we've learned so far in the simulator um, is that it's pretty low grip, uh, what we think, and it's pretty rough. And there's a lot of tight, blind corners. Um, Going to have to be really aggressive in the braking zones, get in the corners deep, but still make the corner. Um, and, and there's a huge penalty at Chicago compared to all the other road courses that we go to if you don't make the corner. So I think you're going to have to not only be aggressive, but you're going to have to be conscious of how aggressive you are 
uh, because the penalty for missing the corner at Chicago is going to be far greater uh, than missing the corner at most road courses. Most road courses, if you overshoot the corner, you run off into the grass or the gravel a little bit. At Chicago, you're going to crash. You're going to hit a wall. Thank you. Let's go to Eddie Kalegi. Hey, Eric, Eddie Kalegi, Motorsports Today. Uh, you talked about earlier the enjoyment you get racing at Sonoma Raceway, and we talked about the changes with the stage breaks, but another change the track has had over the last few years is going back and forth between the carousel and the chute, the chute, then the carousel for two years, back to the chute. I'm curious for someone who's run both of the layouts where you kind of fall on that debate. I love the chute. Um, the carousel was cool to to do it for me once, just so I could say I had that experience to run it like they used to run it in the old days uh, when Ricky Rudd, um, you know, and Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace and those guys would would duke it out there. But uh, for me, I, I absolutely love the shoot, and I love that it gives you that opportunity um, to to make some passes getting into turn seven. Uh, if you get off of turn four well and you know the carousel just never really presented that opportunity with the cars the way they are nowadays um, versus the old days our cars are so much more aero sensitive and so going through the carousel was so tough to run to run behind somebody that you would give up too much of a gap off the carousel to whoever you were racing with, that you didn't really have that opportunity um, to make a pass into turn seven and outbreak them. Where now with the turn four, you know, hopping that curb and going over the other side to the other curb, there, there's a lot of opportunity um, to maintain uh, your your position um, relative to the car in front of you and, and then have an opportunity uh, to, to outbreak them getting into turn seven. So I love the short shoot. Thanks. Best of luck this weekend. Thanks. Let's go to Chris Osborne. Hey, Eric, Chris Osborne, Robbins Racing News. Thanks for joining us today. Um, towards the end of last year, you guys announced that you changed your mind on retirement. You were coming back for two more years with Smithfield. But I keep reading all these articles that are, are kind of conflicting that. And I want to know from the source, you know, is the plan still two more years full time and see what happens then? Um, the, the plan is, is fluid. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, you know, it's, it's still about uh, making sure that I'm having fun and enjoying, uh, driving the race car and, and making sure that I can be, you know, a husband and a father and, and all those things and not sacrifice that. Um, you know, I, I love what I do. I love my, my job. I love my career. Uh, but at the end of the day, chasing, a little bit more money and, and more trophies and, and, and those things um, is, is not what it's about for me. And so as much as I, I love my job and, and all those things, I want to make sure um, that I'm doing the right thing by my family as well. And so those are, those are conversations that I'll continue to have um, internally here. And, and I'll let you guys know um, when, when you guys need to know. Absolutely. I, I can totally respect that. I think everyone could. Uh, and then one more thing. Um, you probably know this. I'm sure you do. Anthony Alfredo's nickname, he, he gave himself Fast Pasta. Um, <laughs> have you considered a nickname like Race and Bacon? Uh, I have not considered that, but now that you've mentioned it, I'll uh, I'll take that home and, and think really hard about it. Please do. I would love that. All right, man. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll go to Kelly Crandall next. Thanks, Brendan. Hey, Eric, I want to go kind of outside the box here. Um, when you look at your tenure at Stuart Haas, you came over in 2018, had a career year, right? Top five in points and got that win. Um, the last couple of years, I think you admit, though, is it's, it's been a little bit of a challenge, right? Do, do you think about kind of how that's turned out where you come over, you get in this car, and obviously it's a championship organization and just kind of, um, again, I guess just a little bit of a challenge that it's been the last couple of years. That hadn't that that can't be what, what you expected. No, no. Um... Certainly not what I expected. I, I expected more years like the first year, um, to be honest. Um, you know, I showed up here in 2018 and we not only won a race, but I was in contention to win probably five or six races throughout that year and, you know, consistently ran in the top 10, top five, 
um, was a, was a team that, you know, on any given weekend, we showed up to a racetrack, felt like we could win. And, you know, that, that has certainly not been the case the last couple of years. So, uh, disappointing, uh, for sure. Um, but a lot of this is, uh, part of the sport too. Um, our sport is very cyclical. Uh, there's some teams that, you know, stay on top most of the time, but even the best teams, I mean, you can look at Hendrick Motorsports and there was a couple year period there where they struggled. Um, you know, you, you've seen it happen with other race teams. You've seen Roush, um, go from being one of the most dominant teams, in the garage area to, to not, um, you know, Penske is pretty steady Eddie. Um, but even they've had years where they've been off as well. Um, you know, and, and for us, it's been that way, you know, we had a great year in 2018, uh, not only for me personally, but organizationally, uh, with winning a lot of races. Um, then we went into 2019 and we weren't quite as good as 2018 as an organization, um, 2020, you know, we were, we were still just okay, but we weren't as dominant and as good as we had been, uh, in the, in the past years. And so I feel like, um, for me, I, I totally anticipated, uh, coming over here and having, um, success and building on that success to, you know, having an opportunity to go and, and compete, to be a champion. Um, and so, yeah, that, that hasn't came uh, to fruition. And I'm certainly disappointed about it, but at the end of the day, you know, that, that doesn't define me as a human being. I, I certainly, as a, as a race car driver, always want more, um, and want to be a champion, want to win multiple races in a year. And, and I have all of those lofty goals, but, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes things don't always go the way you want them to. Along those same lines, in a previous question, you were talking about you love what you do and having fun and, and of course, the family aspect. So given everything that also you just said, is, is there a little bit of you have to embrace that challenge as well of, again, wanting to be the best race car driver and knowing that it's not going to come easy and kind of just embrace that fight to get what you want? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, life's life's not easy. Um, there, Everybody has good days and bad days. Everybody has good years and bad years um yeah, there's seasons uh seasons to life there's seasons to a career um and so for me it doesn't it doesn't water down the fact that i'm still racing at the highest level of stock car auto racing uh something that i dreamed about as a kid you know i'm i'm getting to live out my childhood dream uh driving a nascar cup series car uh against 40 other of the or 39 of the other best race car drivers in the world that drive stock cars. So I am very appreciative and very grateful of, of what I get to do. Um, do I want, you know, more wins and in, in championships and all those things? Absolutely. I'm a competitive person. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you sit there and, and you look at Richard Petty, who is the king of our sport. And I've gotten the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Richard and he doesn't ever sit down at Thanksgiving with all 200 of his trophies ever. He sits down at Thanksgiving with his family um, and, and he sits down, you know, to, to share a meal with people he cares about. And so um, all the time that I've ever gotten to spend with him and talk about things outside of racing and talking about life, um, you know, he's been a huge impact on me just being able to recognize and realize um, that you don't always have to chase the, the success because it doesn't really define who you are. Um, once you stop driving a race car, um, what defines who you are is, is how you treat other people and, um, how you are with the people you love. And so, yeah, I mean, I think I, as a competitive person, I want to win everything, but the reality is, is that's not the case. Thank you, Eric. We're going to go to Lee and then finish out with Dustin. Lee, take it away. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Yeah. Uh, talking about people you love, I saw the picture with you and Alex after he won Little League. And how rewarding is it just to kind of spend time with him and, you know, have those moments that, you you know, a lot of guys just don't take the time to have? Yeah, I um, I love it. 
I absolutely love it. I just, those are the moments for me that at this, at this point in life, like I absolutely cherish those moments. Um, I, I can honestly tell you that I was as happy and as excited um, that he won his baseball championship um, with his team uh, as I've been winning a cup race. I mean, literally and he won a little league game, like a little league championship. Like it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal, but what was a big deal was just to see him cherish that moment and to, to see him enjoy the success of the practice and the hard work and um, all the lessons and the hitting lessons and, and all the things, um, you know, to, to see it, to see him reap that, the benefit, um, it is, is awesome. Um, and I'm so glad that I was there to, to share that with him. And when the game was over to, to see him come and jump up into my arms and give me a big hug. Um, it was, it was awesome. I, I loved every minute of it. And, you know, I, I grew up playing baseball and, and team sports. I played basketball and, um, you know, I, I, I love playing team sports. I love the fact that Alex is involved in team sports and, um, it's fun to, to share moments like that with my kids. Same for Abby. Um, she was the lead, uh, she had a lead role in her theater show, um, this year. She'd been working for the last four years to, you know, go, transition from being, um, just a part of the cast, being in the, what they call ensemble, um, to getting a lead role. And so she had a lead role and she was Simba in Lion King and, to watch her perform on stage and watch her take ownership and watch all the practice that she puts in and, and the, the training, the singing lessons and all the stuff. And then to see her go and perform on stage and, and to have the success that she has and to share that with her, like as a dad, like it just makes me so proud and it, it, I love it. I absolutely love it. Has Alex shown any interest in racing? Uh, very little. And I'm totally good with that. Yeah. Uh, the reason I ask you is um, I was at the dirt track uh, last week here at Tri-City and Kyle and Brexton were out there and I you know, mentioned it to Joey and, you know, he just started racing with his oldest. And um, he said that, you know, the level of pressure that they're putting the, on these kids at this age just seemed kind of ridiculous. But, you know, you see both sides of it, whether it's team sp sport individual and you know, it, it, to hear you talk of that elation, um, I'm not really getting that that vibe at the dirt track with these kids these days. Yeah. And, you know, for me, we, we did a little bit of it. We raced for a year with Alex um, and uh, I didn't love it. I showed up at the racetrack and was head down working on his go kart to figure out how to make it go as fast as it could. I was constantly critiquing him and criticizing him um, on what he needed to do better. There was what I felt to be an immense amount of pressure on him for sure. Um, and to, to go out and perform, you know, you show up at a go-kart track and um, you're racing against a lot of other kids that their dads are quote unquote, normal dads. They work normal jobs and his dad is a race car driver. So naturally he should be good. Um, and, you know, I, I think the amount of, um, you know, pressure that it puts on those kids and some kids can handle it and some kids can't. Right. But I see, uh, you know, I see what Keelan's doing. I see what Brexton's doing. I, I see what um, Owen Larson's doing and, and, and all those kids. And, Man, I just remember what it was like when I was eight, nine, ten years old, and I was starting out go kart racing. And you know, I, I went purely as a hobbyist. Like we went and we had fun, and yeah, we had success. And I, and I ran really good and and won you know state championships and and national championships. But at the end of the day, like we rode up and down the road as a family in a dually and a trailer, and it was just fun there was no real pressure. Like if we didn't win, I didn't have to answer to sponsors or, or social media or any of that stuff that these kids nowadays have to, um, you know, they have a fan following at 10 years old or, or younger. Um, and they have to 
come up with excuses on weekends that they run bad. Like for a nine-year-old, I just feel like that's totally unfair. Um, you know, they're, they're selling merchandise and doing all those things, which I think is awesome. Like it, it gives these kids wonderful opportunities to have such a head start on building a career. And I know that things, you know, nowadays are going younger and younger. Um, and, and so by all means, that is arguably the best way to, to groom them to be professional race car drivers. But I just remember for me at, at 10 years old, I was not thinking about being groomed as a professional race car driver. I was just doing it because I loved it. And it was way more fun, um, you know, to, to go 60 miles an hour in a go-kart than it was to, to wait at shortstop for a ground ball to come my way. Um, all the while, I still love baseball and I played baseball all the way to high school. Appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. Dustin, finish us out. Thanks a lot. Uh, a couple of things to kind of follow up there, uh, Eric, and I'm, I'm going blank. Are you an assistant coach or help coach the, the your <laughs> son's team? Uh, are you involved? You are, aren't you? I am an assistant coach. I I refuse to be the head coach, um, but I, I totally enjoy uh, helping and, and teaching the kids the fundamentals of baseball. And the trophy that uh, Alex won. So did that go into his room or does that go into a special place in the house and replace one of your trophies? No, it went uh, it went in his room on his dresser uh, front and center. Great. Um, hey, I want to ask kind of a racing thing and I want to kind of get your perspective on this, something a little different. Um, this year, and obviously every year there's different driver crew chief combinations and, and we go through that. And so obviously a lot's been talked about with, with Kyle Busch, with the success he's had and so forth. And I'm curious, um, with only 20 minutes of practice and, and how, how tough is it to get that driver crew chief relationship, or is that as much now being done in the simulator? Um, I know you with Drew, you guys had the past relationship, so that kind of helped things along but you've kind of had to go through that in this time period too. How challenging is it to have that driver crew chief relationship build when there's such limited track time these days? It is challenging. Um, no doubt about it. It is, it is challenging because, you know, in the old days you'd show up, you'd practice on Friday, you'd talk about it. You'd qualify Friday evening after qualifying was over. You'd come up with a game plan with your crew chief for what you're going to do to the car Saturday morning. And typically Saturday morning was the opportunity to kind of experiment, try a few things here and there. And then you talked about it after Saturday morning's practice. And then you would get with your crew chief and your engineers and you'd put in whatever you thought was going to be the best for happy hour. And then you'd run, you know, two runs in happy hour, two long runs in happy hour. And when happy hour was over, you'd download some more about it and you'd come up with a game plan for the race. And so there was a lot of opportunity throughout the course of a weekend to work with your crew chief on the feel you were looking for in the race car. And that is gone. Um, you know, you show up now and kind of what you have is what you got. You can make some few minor adjustments um, with the heights of the car and the wedge uh, you know, some sway bar settings and, and some shocks and that's it. And air pressures. Um, that's it. That's all, that's all you can change. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, that communication and that, that relationship is extremely important. Uh, but at the end of the day, what's the most important is just having a fast race car. Um, you know, for, from a driver's standpoint, uh, you certainly want to have a great relationship with your crew chief, but regardless of the relationship you have with your crew chief, um, if your crew chief and your engineers and your organization, um, you know, from the aero department to the vehicle dynamics group to everybody is, you know, supplying you with the fastest race car, you're going to go fast. I mean, that's, that's really it. So I think that's, that's ultimately you know, the, the most important thing is, is making sure that the organization and the crew chiefs and the engineers are all uh, on the same page and, and put in the best race car on the racetrack. And then at that point, it's up to the driver and crew chief to fine tune it. 